enough Padawans, it's Mrs. Angel with your lesson for today on the properties of isosceles and equilateral triangles. So let's start with isosceles triangles. What we know about isosceles triangles is that they have two congruent sides. As you can see in the diagram here, we see that AB is congruent to side BC. Those two congruent sides are called the legs. So that would mean that here's a leg and here's a leg. The angle where those legs intersect, that is called the vertex angle of an isosceles triangle. So what we know about the legs is that they're congruent and the vertex angle is where they meet. The side that is opposite the vertex angle, meaning our side that is not congruent to the other two, that is called the base of an isosceles triangle. And the two angles along the base, which in this case is angle two and angle three, those are called the base angles. It's important to know this vocabulary as we move through. So here's what we can conclude about isosceles triangles. First of all, if two sides of a triangle are congruent, that means that the angles opposite those sides are also congruent. What does that look like in this diagram? Well, that means if side AB, our first leg, is congruent to side BC, our second leg, which is the case in this diagram, then we can say the base angles are also congruent. That would mean angle two is congruent to angle three. So essentially, if the legs of the isosceles triangle are congruent, the base angles are also congruent. The converse or the opposite of that theorem is also true. If the angles are congruent, that means the opposite sides are as well. So that means in my diagram, if I was given that angle two is congruent to angle three, those are my base angles, I can conclude that the sides opposite these angles are also congruent. All in all, this is a fancy way of saying isosceles triangles will always have two congruent sides and two congruent angles. So let's take this information and use it. Here in triangle number one, what are we given? Well, we're given two congruent sides. Hmm, so what do we know? Well, if the sides are congruent, that means the base angles are also congruent. So if angle L is 68 degrees, that means angle J is also 68 degrees. But then how would we find the measure of angle K? Oh yeah, that's right. All three angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So I would just do 68 plus 68, which is 136, and subtract that from 180 to get 44 degrees. What about this triangle here? What are we given? Well, again, we're given that our two legs are congruent. So that means that the angles, the base angles, are also congruent. So if angle D is 106, 180 minus 106, that's 74 degrees. So I now know that these two angles have to be equal and they have to add up to 74. So that's just gonna be 74 divided by two, which is 37 degrees. So I know the measure of angle C and the measure of angle E have to be 37 degrees. Lastly, at number three, what are we given? Hmm, we're actually given that these two angles are equal to each other. Well, if the angles are equal, what can we conclude? That the opposite sides are also equal. So we can say because the base angles are equal, the legs are also equal. Well, that means if the length of XY is 12, the length of YZ is also 12 centimeters. How would we find the measure of angle Y? That's right, the three angles of a triangle add up to 180. So 77, plus 77, that's 154. And if we subtract that from 180, we get 26 degrees, and that's the measure of angle Y. Moving 
on to equilateral triangles. What do we know? Well, if a triangle is equilateral, that means it's also equiangular. And it works both ways. If it's equiangular, it's also equilateral. So if all three angles of this triangle are equal, measure of angle A is congruent to measure of angle B is congruent to measure of angle C, what can we conclude? We can conclude that side AB is congruent to side BC, which is also congruent to, you guessed it, side CA. It also works in reverse. If the three sides of the triangle are congruent, then we can conclude the three angles are also congruent. So essentially, if the angles are the same, the sides are also the same, and vice versa. So what do we got in this triangle? We have two angle measures, 60 and 60. Well, we know that the three angles of a triangle add up to 180. So 60 plus 60, that's 120. And 180 minus 120 is also, oh wait, 60. So if the measure of angle C is also 60, we are looking at an equiangular triangle. All of these angles are equal. Well, if all the angles are equal, that means, you guessed it, all the sides are also equal. So if AB is nine feet, that means BC is nine feet and AC is nine feet. If it's equiangular, it's equilateral. Now, what about this one? Hmm, this one, I'm given one of the side lengths, but I'm also given that all the side lengths are equal, meaning it's equilateral. Well, if it's equilateral, that means it's also equiangular. And the measure of angle J is equal to the measure of angle K is equal to the measure of angle L. But I don't know what any of them are, so how would I figure this out? Oh yeah, the three angles of a triangle all add up to 180. And if all three angles are the same, then I'm just gonna take 180 and divide it by three. 180 divided by three is 60. So each of these angles has a measure of 60 degrees. All equilateral triangles will have three 60 degree angles. So let's get into some fun stuff. I'm gonna help you set up the equations. You're going to finish solving. First triangle here in number five. What do we know? Well, we know that these two angles are equal to each other, meaning I'm thinking isosceles. If the angles are equal, the sides are also equal, which means this side length is equal to this one. I can even add some tick marks here if I want to, making my equation 4x plus 23 equals 10x minus 1. I'll let you finish that equation later. Number six, what do we know about this triangle? Hmm, it looks like we're given two congruent sides. So we're thinking isosceles. If the sides are congruent, what do we know? Oh yeah, we know that the angles are also congruent. So if this is 9x minus 25, this is also 9x minus 25. So there's a couple different ways to go about this. We do know the three angles of a triangle add up to 180, so one possible equation could be adding them all up and setting them equal to 180. That feels like a lot of work. I think there's a better way. If I know that the three angles of a triangle add up to 180 and one of those angles is 104, I can at least figure out what the sum of the other two equals. 180 minus 104, that's 76. So now I know these two angles have to add up to 76 and they're equal to each other. So 76 divided by two, that's 38. So if both of these angles are 38, my equation for this is 9x minus 25 equals 38. And I'll let you finish solving from there. Number seven, what do we know? Well, we're given that these two sides are congruent, so we're thinking isosceles. And if the two legs of an isosceles triangle are equal, that means the two base angles are also equal. So we're looking at the equation 5x minus 7 equals 8x minus 55. I'll let you finish that equation later. Number 8, what do we know? 
Well, we're given three congruent sides in this triangle, so we're thinking equilateral. And equilateral triangles are also equiangular, which means all three of these angles are equal. But if you remember what I told you on the last page, in equilateral triangles, all three angles have a measure of 60 degrees. 60, 60, and 60. So what's our equation? 4x plus 8 equals 60. And I'll let you continue solving that on your own. Triangle number 9. What do we know? We know that these two angles are 60. So you might be thinking like, oh, isosceles. But hold on a second. If two of the angles are 60, what's that third angle have to be? 60, 60, also 60, this triangle is equiangular, which means if it's equiangular, it is also equilateral. And these three sides are also congruent. So our equation here, 7x plus 19 equals 11x minus 89. You can finish that one later on. Last triangle in this video. What do we know? Well, it looks like we're given two congruent sides. So we're thinking isosceles. If the two legs are congruent, that means the true base angles are also congruent. If the one base angle is 29, that means the other base angle is also 29. And the three angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So one way to solve this equation, the long way, would be with this equation down here. And that's totally fine. But if you wanted an equation that's simpler, we know 29 plus 29 is 58. And 180 minus 58, 122. So we know this angle has to equal 122, meaning a simpler equation could just be 11x minus 65 equals 122. And you know that you can finish that on your own. That's it for today's lesson on isosceles and equilateral. Have fun finishing those equations, and I will see you next time. Bye.